Hello, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julie. And now we're going to do a review of Nightfall. Hopefully you've had a chance to check out our how to play and play through of the cooperative mode and the competitive mode. Mm -hmm. The only thing we haven't done yet is the campaign mode. Somebody had has requested oh, okay. uh, us to do that. If we get some more requests, we will do sure. uh, a campaign mode. But That's like hero quest thing, right? When it's campaign? Yeah, in a sense it is, yes. Okay. Uh, so, but our review is going to be based on those two modes. And Julie's dressed up because you'll see that something else arrived that we're going to be shooting next. So we thought, you know. I don't want to have to change twice. Exactly. Let's just put it that way. And if you saw the. <laughs> I'm tired already. <laughs> if you saw the competitive mode playthrough, she dressed up as a demon. Yeah. And now she's, she's dead. I kind of calmed the hair down a little bit, made it not so rough. And <laughs> uh, so I'll just go over real quick. The standard mode is two to six players. It's teams. Uh, one side is the demons, one side is the knights. Cooperative can be one to three players. Wow. And campaign is one to two players. Hmm. Uh, so let's take a look at what you're doing. Okay. This is an asymmetrical game. Whether or not you're having the AI deck uh, control the demons, if you're playing cooperative. So this is the AI deck, and you can see this play that on, on, on a different uh, video. Uh, or if you're playing competitive, uh, in this case, Julie's the demons, and I'm the knights. And when you're playing two players, I'll have two knights, and Julie will have two demons, and we'll rotate. Uh, her demon will go first, then one of my knights, then her demon, then one of my knights. And what's happening here, uh, usually they're up like this, but you won't be able to see anything if it's like that. Uh, so we lay them down. There's a seal that's weakening, and the, and the demons are coming through to break it entirely so that they can let out all the evil. Now, this is an end of round marker that I put here, uh, to, so that way you can see it on camera here. There's no player elimination. It's the first of so many victory points. So in the, in the regular mode, the demons need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine victory points uh, to get to the monastery door. In other words, it simulates breaking the seal. The knights start out. Uh, one ahead, but we'll see uh, when you you can set uh, different victory points. You can they suggest that if your the players are are more equal, you can put the knight there. Or in this case, I think next time I'll give Julie a point because when you watch it play, Julie did pretty well. Thanks. But uh, we started out like that on the on the uh, competitive mode, so you can set this. So if you're playing with a younger person, just give and they're playing the knights, just give them a little bit more uh, victory points. They don't need as many to win. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, how do you get victory points? Well, the demons want to get these elders. There's six of them. You, you start with the seal in the middle, and then you put the other nine tiles randomly. And you'll see there's location effects. They don't recommend that you play with those. We haven't yet. Uh, each elder has six victory, not six victory, but six uh, points of damage that they can take. There's actually eight of those elders. Okay, I confuse it with their, their hit points. So they have, and you use the slider to keep track of that. Uh, so every time an elder dies, the demon gets two victory points. Every time they kill a knight, they start out here in the corners, uh, they get one victory point. How do knights get victory points? Or just if they survive the day, it <laughs> says right here they get, or the hour, I'm not sure if it's an hour or a day, uh, they get one uh, point, and every demon they kill, they get one point. And you'll see, uh, so the, the demons will start here in the center on the seal, they'll get uh, so many minions that their helpers, these, uh, uh, imps and in a two or three player game I think even up to f uh, four let me see here real quick um, yeah two three or four player game you get three imps and a mm -hmm. five or six player game you only get two imps and they start out on adjacent tiles uh, and minions get two actions every turn they can either heal uh, move or do a melee attack and then the knights get uh, stone golems and they get them in the corners that they're not in and they can even have up to four stone golems in the game, and demons can have up to four imps. And they too get two actions, either heal, move, or attack. And you'll see the last time we played, this guy was almost gone. <laughs> uh, so each uh, knight has different abilities. So I'll just show this one real quick. Every demon and knight can spend two magic to get this ability. You can use them as many times as you want on your turn. Knights start out with defense, which I'll explain in a minute, and they'll have different hit points, usually six. And then they can have an all time a power that they uh, they can use uh, whenever certain conditions are, are met. So this is a hand management game. 
So each demon and knight gets four cards. Unless you're playing the cooperative mode, you don't get the demons don't get these cards, they get AI cards. They'll get one faced this way as your primary ability, and then you'll, the next card you draw will be upside down, they'll get a secondary ability, uh, each demon will. And by the way, in the campaign mode, you'll see that there are village cards and relic cards, same size, that you'll play with, and you have this map here. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't, we don't have no idea how that works yet. Nope. So each character gets four cards. You get a basic card, which you always will get back. This is in the competitive mode. In the cooperative mode, the knights get this, but not, as I said, not the demons. And you get three power cards. So here's the knight power deck, and here's the demon power deck. And you will see, we went through about this many cards in the uh, uh, competitive game. And how do the cards work? Well, you can use them in three different ways. Uh, well, this is a better example right here. So this card, I'll show it on this camera instead. You can, use, you can either use the top icon, in this case, to, uh, a two range attack to do two points of damage, or you can use the bottom portion, gain three defense, you may not move for the next, uh, for the rest of your turn. Or you can turn it over and discard it to get one of these icons, which is one melee, or one range, or one movement, or one shield, or heal once, or get one magic. So let's say I really want to use my magic effect. I could use the back of this card or any of my other power cards with my basic card, and that would be two magic, and then I could use my magical ability. Uh, so that's what you're doing. You have to play all your cards, and then when your turn ends, you'll get your basic card back and three more, because you can get slowed, where there's effects that can slow you, which means you turn over one of your power cards randomly, which you know limits your, your abilities. Uh, how do the shields work? Well, the nice thing about the knights, if a knight's in a room with an elder, the imps and the demons must attack the knight. But let's say they're about to attack this elder, I'm in an adjacent room. If I have a shield, which I do, and say the imp's gonna attack once, I can go into the room and then spin my shield to absorb that damage. Uh, there's a couple other rules, like if you're in a room with, with, with bad guys, with opponents, if you leave, they get a free, a, a, they do one damage to you for each opponent in the room. And uh, so after the knights and the demons go, you'll see there's an end of a round here. So that's where the knights get their one victory point. The golems will get two actions and the imps will get two actions. And then if, if uh, there's a stone golem available, in other words, not all four have been placed, you'll get one in one of the corners. And if, there, if, uh, if there's at least one imp available, the uh, demons will get one imp on the seal. Uh, so you can't attack or move uh, diagonally. Usually some cards can change that. And uh, you're just, oh, here are the other knights right here. So when a knight dies, you get another one in the in one of the corners. In the, and then when a demon dies, they get another one. It will start in the seal. But in the uh, cooperative mode, if a demon dies here, the demon comes back. By the way, the elders typically don't move unless you have cards that can affect your movement. They don't attack. They're basically targets that demons are targeting to bring to break the seal. Yep. So that's just a quick little overview there. Yeah, that's very good, honey. And uh, I go into a little bit more detail in the other videos. So let's take a look at our review here. We give our positive, negatives, and neutrals, and then our rating using the BGG scale. And I always go first. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Um, I think there's really cool art on the standees. I guess that's what they're called. And the cards, like these cards here, is that what they're called? Standies? Yeah, these are standees, yeah. Okay. I just think the art's really neat. And the art on, on these cards, the, the people cards, yeah, the, those are just... I'll show a demon here. Yeah. I just think it's really, like, you feel like, oh my gosh, you would not want to meet her in a dark alley. I mean, yeah, she's really thematic. scary. <laughs> um, what else did they say? I think this was, I had a good time playing this cooperatively and competitively. Um, I prefer co cooperative, as many of you know, I mean, you don't, but I do prefer cooperative, but um, competitive, it just, it's just that I can't, I really don't compete as well with David as someone that's been a you know, a serious, serious, serious gamer longer than I have, but well, you've played I think a lot I of, hung in there pretty well. No, you did well, and that's where I started out like this right here, 
where we were equal. Mm -hmm. We needed an equal number of victory points. I think the next time we play, I'll give you the advantage. Because oh, okay. you were close to winning. You were definitely were close to winning if I would have started you out like that. Yeah. And then over time, if we play enough, you will be, we'll be even. Will be, will be more equal. But so. it, it is, I really had fun playing both ways. I found it very easy to play. Once At first, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of like, oh my God, there's no way I can play this. And then once Dave had started taking his time and explaining it all to me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is pretty cool. And well, you, you I gotta really give yourself, liked it. you got to give yourself credit. You have played a lot of games. I get that. And at first, it was intimidating. It was very intimidating. And, so, you know... I'm an alpha gamer in the sense of I read the rules and I've been a, I've been a game designer. Yes. I've worked. I've been in the industry for 23 years, but you've been a wife of a game designer. I have for uh, 26 years yeah, and so, together for 30 years. So, so you, you actually do very well. And thank in fact, you. when other, you play with other people, they're they're surprised at how well you do. When Especially with my cognitive impairment. Yeah. So I did I did pretty well. And and the last thing I had to say, I didn't do very many. I'm sorry, but um, is that. You know me, I'm a big stickler on, oh my gosh, if it takes like an hour and a half, I'm done. Well, this goes by pretty fast that an hour did go by and I could finally feel I was like, okay, an hour must be going by by now. But I was having so much fun and it, you're so immersed in it that to me, I thought it went by kind of fast. And I don't, honestly, I don't remember how long the playthroughs went. You'll have to see that on the oh, video. within an hour, that included... That, it, that included teaching. teaching, so it would have been probably 45 minutes. Yeah, and see, I'm good. Yeah. If it's an hour or less, I'm like right on. And But as I said, it was so much fun. It, it was one of the games I didn't, wasn't like clock watching, like, oh my God, how much longer is this going to take? I was just so into what, what, what I, I was What I think doing. works for you is that you have to use all your cards. Mm -hmm. If this is more, oh, I better save this, and then I, because you've played deck builders like mm -hmm. like dominion yeah and uh uh legendary where you got to use this card to trigger this card to trigger this card oh, yeah yeah yeah. it doesn't have that here so mm -hmm. that's why you were able to get it real quick yeah and i like the you know everything's pretty self-explanatory because you have these little card well for me i have these little oh, yeah. cards here those. that um I have a hard time remembering what adjacent yeah, have, is and all that. And so this little... Um, they have a good reference card. Yeah. The, what did they call it again? Reference cards. Reference cards are just so great, especially even though I have been playing games a long time, it's still really good for me because I refer to this, these, especially the, the first two David showed you, I refer to those, I'd say like 99% of the game just because... I just had to. No, that's all right. That's why they're there. Mm -hmm. All right. So I had a lot to say. Oh, good. Way more than I did. <laughs> so it's thematic gameplay with meaningful decisions. And that's really important uh, when you're playing this. Mm -hmm. It's not too fiddly. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we did own Sleeping Gods. And I thought about doing videos on it. And I have yet to find a story game that we like. We've played The Seventh Continent. We've played some other story games. Uh, Sleeping Gods... Uh, has a lot of positive things about it, but what wasn't why we didn't keep it and we sold it is because it was too difficult. I even modified the combat, and the game was just beating you up so much. I don't uh, remember it at all. And even uh, Legacy games. We've played Pandemic Legacy mm -hmm. and Clank Legacy, and we gave up on those too because yeah. Clank Legacy was too fiddly, always trying to get stickers and stuff out. I said, forget it. It's too much work. Pandemic Legacy, uh, the first one... It punishes you. Mm. And if good video game design, the, the video game allows you to restart or allows you to have save spots where you can continue where you messed ah. up. It's different. I have yet to find a video, a board game that does that well. Uh. Now, so why am I talking about this? Because Red Raven Games, we have some of their other games. But this is my favorite one so far, and we're not fans of Sleeping Gods. It, I don't remember it. I didn't mind the story. I thought the, the maps were good. The art was outstanding. Uh, and I just, I liked the idea of it. It was because it was too difficult with the combat. It says, I'd rather just play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. Uh, I'd rather play a role playing game. But this game, it, it really, one of my favorite games is Star Wars Miniatures. I love card management games. Uh, and it's not, it, it avoids the player elimination issue. Mm hmm. It's okay if I lose a night because I know I'm going to get another one. It might be somebody that's even better. True. Uh, 
it's just a really, again, it's really a race game because we're racing to score those yeah, victory points. Yeah, that's true. I never thought of it like And when that. I played it, I said, you know, I could modify some other miniature games to do the same thing where you don't, it's okay if you lose your, new person your, ar in. your army that you start out with because you can bring in other guys. Yeah. Uh, so, that's a neat idea. So different play modes is definitely a plus. We mm -hmm. haven't played the campaign mode. Uh, nice components and art. However, the reason why I didn't say... Uh, I said nice because the factions need differentiation. When I was first learn opening the game up, I don't know what that is. You can't tell the difference between demons and knights. They're both blue backgrounds. Oh. So I don't know why this would have been done on purpose. Maybe the designer can explain that. But why why would you why why wouldn't you do like a light red background instead for the demons, and keep oh, the blue yeah, background that for the been knights? Cool. So this can be difficult for people to figure out who's who. Because yeah. then you got to match it to the card. So that was something that I had to figure out. And then when you're playing it, it does require you to go like, okay, uh, who's the demon again? And you'll see a couple of times when we were playing, I was confusing even the demons. Mm -hmm. I was like, because once you get these, a couple of these demon girls in here, which we had. They look the same. They look the same. Yeah. Uh, so I needed to have some more. Uh, differentiation, some more emphasis techniques on that. That's a good point. Uh, and even these cards, there's not much difference between mm -hmm. the knight cards and the. Uh, I mean, there's enough of a difference. Yeah. But why both use he, uh, blue hues? You could have made that more of a red. Well, so, there's more red in that one. Yeah, but if uh, from a distance. True. If you're looking right here. I mean, you can kind of, if you're looking for it, see. Yeah. but it's not, it, they could have did a little bit more differentiation. So a minor thing, okay? It's not a deal breaker. No, gosh, no. Uh, pleasure to learn, teach, and play. Even though there are some issues uh, with the rule book in terms of emphasis techniques and uh, not uh, explaining everything, I still had fun reading it and teaching it. Uh, decent playing time, just like what Julie said, it doesn't take long to play, and, and it's uh, quality play time. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of downtime. Mm -mm. Now there could be a little analysis paralysis when you're trying to figure out the best combination of cards, but that typically goes pretty fast. Okay, so there are some rulebook <laughs> issues that will challenge inexperienced gamers. There's some oversight. So here's the interesting thing. For those of you who know my background, I did my dissertation on how to write comprehensible rule books. And I've been in, in the industry since 1999, worked for companies such as Fantasy Flight. Uh, I did uh, Weird Wars, I did uh, work, uh, that was Pinnacle. I did uh, Blue Planet, a little bit of oh, okay. uh, some of that. I've worked for Academy Games, consulting. I've worked for Gen Con for five, for five years. I uh, had my own company with my brothers. Mm -hmm. My point is this, there are people out there. I've offered my, my expertise to companies. They know, they've seen me at Gamma, they've seen me at Gen Con. Why don't they have people like me and others look at their rule book before they publish it? Because I'm going to point out to you, when I was teaching, when you watch the other videos, I was not aware there's a second edition of the rule book. Mm -hmm. And the things I point out are addressed in the second edition rule book. Really? If they would have had me play this before they printed the first edition, I would have said, hey, on this page, you're missing information on how to handle. And I'll show you which page on page 24. This is what they updated. I had no idea on this page they actually and they added a fifth level to the cooperative mode and how, how the AI deck determines hits and what happens when when uh, the a demon in the AI deck is going to move or make an attack uh, and or equal uh, opportunities. It actually has a sentence about that now. Called, it says player choice. When you watch the first the first video, mm -hmm. I say. This is missing, oh. not knowing the second edition was out. I'll be darned. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, and then there's some emphasis techniques. There's, there's rules that are buried in different places. It's still a fun read. This is why I have these little sticky notes in here. Uh, I also remember when I said there was a discrepancy here mm -hmm. with two players, and what do you do when you do the cooperative mode? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they fixed that too. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, all my point is, and I don't know if there's any issues with the campaign mode, okay? I have no idea. We haven't played it. Mm -mm. My point is this. There are people out there, like myself, 
that if companies just took a little bit more time and uh, gave uh, had other people's uh, look at it, yeah, they wouldn't have to reissue PDFs and not frustrate people because what can happen is less experienced players were there's a reason why they watch playthrough videos on how to play is because they they can struggle sure because of these oversights now the last thing is i'm not sure if they're if this is balanced if the knights are easier or the demons are easier i have no idea yeah. um, with more plays and that's why it's a neutral because yeah. i don't know all right so let's see our rating so this, despite okay. my my complaints i have no idea why he rated this okay you might be surprised i so probably will go. be what so i said it was a nine. Oh, and i said it was an eight and that's high for you with it these is. types of games because this is very thinky in terms of a you know uh confrontation with a competitive mode now you like the cooperative mode way more yeah, yeah. now for me this a lot of hits a lot of box checks a lot of boxes for me i like hand management i like the options I like the fact there's no player elimination. I do like that. Uh, I like that a lot. The way they did the cards, the fact that it's not fiddly, like I said, that you play the cards and you just deal with it mm -hmm. right then and there. I'm not trying to do all these combinations. True. Uh, now, maybe with the location effects, it might get a little fiddly there because there's things that, like, it says right here on this tile. We haven't played with uh, that. Discard a card to gain two magic. So it could be a situation now that I might, okay, I'm going to move in there so I can discard a card to get two minutes. So you might get a little bit more fiddliness with that, but it doesn't look it doesn't look too bad. Uh, and even then, there's some BGG comments on how to handle some of these location oh, effects. Good. Uh, but we didn't play with it, so nope. we don't know. So why did you give it an eight? Well, because it is very thinky, and this is definitely a game I have to play when I am not tired, um, which is you know it's fine. Um, I did enjoy it very, very much, and I would suggest it, but I would only suggest it if, like, it's after I've woken up from my nap, um, or had a big cup of hot tea or something. Um, I just, is just learning how everything works together, it was still a little, little hard for me to, to kind of well, grasp, but I did pretty good towards the end, and, um, but it's not quite a nine yet. I think if I get more confidence in doing it without always having to ask him, is this how I do this? And I get my own self-confidence yeah. well, build up, then I might probably no, get It's a me. high rating for it you is for this type for of game. Yeah. Now, what can change the rating is this is campaign thing. It can go up if the campaign mode yeah. is really cool. We haven't tried it yet. No. Uh, but it could also go down if we find out there's a balance issue. Yeah. Now, if there's a balance issue, that could be fixed with giving more victory points to that side. So even right. then, it could still stay high. It could still be fixed, yeah. But I, I really do strongly recommend this game. It's just, it's yeah. so much when fun. When we saw it at Gen Con, we pre-ordered it. And that's one thing we'd like you to do is, you know, keep in mind that we pay for a lot of these games. So every time you subscribe and like uh, is appreciated. We really do appreciate yeah. it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And don't forget to like the video. and. For those of you who have, thank you so much, and we really appreciate all of you. Right, so we def definitely recommend this. Yep. Uh, we pre-ordered it right away when I saw that Gen Con. I said, "Yeah, that looks yeah, good." Yeah, he got now, on his phone and did it right away. No, that's that's uh, uh, you know, from a gamer's standpoint, I could usually tell when something's going to be really good. That's why we we have a pretty good track record with the Kickstarters we back. Mm -hmm. Someday we've backed over 150. Uh, someday I'll go over. Uh, he will go over. <laughs> well, you can talk about it too, because some of them you didn't like. Uh, yeah. yeah, I couldn't. I don't even know no. nowadays what's a Kickstarter and what is we just got from Target, unless I go pick it up at Target. So well, I don't those know. will be future videos. But <laughs> the uh, sometimes though, you like I said, we back Sleeping Gods. Everything about that game worked, except it was mm -hmm. too difficult. And I said, I don't want to be. I don't want to play a game that punishes you that much. So that's why we stopped playing it. Okay. All right, so thanks for uh, watching, and we'll see you later. Thanks, guys. See you right. soon. Bye-bye.